want to trash demonstrate today and cross your feet and cross your legs. Look at that horse up there. In that direction. You don't need to move. You don't need to talk. Just look continuously in that direction. And while you're looking at that, I'd like to remind you of the job you had. When you first learned to write the letters of the alphabet, it seemed like it to be a horrendous task. All those different letters, all those different forms and shapes, and so many of them, in printed letters, Bristol letters, capsule letters, small letters, and gradually, one by one, you form a visual mental image of each letter. A visual mental image located somewhere in your brain, located there permanently. In the same way with the numbers. Had to learn those numbers. You know, six and upside down nine. A nine upside down six. Which way to the latest point on letter number three? And gradually form visual mental images located permanently. Somewhere in your brain, I've been talking to you. Your respiration has changed. Your blood pressure has changed. Your pulse rate has changed. Your muscle tones has changed. Your motor reflexes have changed. And what next I do? word now. You'll close your eyes now. And as you continue, you'll feel warm, more comfortable. So very, very comfortable the deeper you go. As you continue to go deeper and deeper, seem to you that you are a bodiless mind. A mind is just floating in space, floating in time. And along with your voice, your mind will go my voice. My voice can change into the voice of your parents, your primates, your schoolmates, your neighbors, into the voice of anything you wish, into the sound of the birds, the lake, the river, the wind. And I want you to go so deeply into the trance that you forget it everything and begin to enjoy memories that have been long forgotten. Memories that become real and take over. And you may find yourself sitting in the desk at school my voice may be your teacher. Or you may be playing by yourself. I 
I don't know what memories you have, but it's very nice to relive them, to re-experience them. Long forgotten memories, sudden memory, and you find yourself right in the middle of them. and enjoying it. Now all of us dream. In our dreams, we can return to our childhood, to any event of the past. We can relive our past, our fantasies, Voices we hear are real. People who see in our dreams are real. The dinners we eat in our dreams are real. Everything is very real. And it's only a revivification of past experience past understandings and very, very real. I lie in bed and dream I'm walking through the snow back in Wisconsin. My feet are cold. Snow is very real. My Walking is very real. The scenery is very real. I'm lying in bed. All of our experience takes place within our brain. We hear and see and sense things within our brain. And be very comfortable and enjoy. Enjoy being a schoolboy, a little boy, a youth, whatever you wish. that I didn't really give him a suggestion, nor did I really tell him what to do. I told him what not to do, and I spoke to make him realize what was occurring within him. As you look at him, immobility is something that would be very difficult for you to achieve consciously. You can see the absence of ordinary waking mobility. suggested it in any way, time is altered. Events of the past are recurring, and recurring experientially in the time that they had at the time of experience. Now 
I really know nothing about his past. But he knows a great deal. And I'd like to give you another experience. Something that should charm you and fascinate you. You can awaken any time you wish, there's no hurry. I would like to have you have the experience of awakening from your neck up while your body still remains in deep trance. I'd like to have you discover that your mind is something apart from your body and that you really had no control over your body that you can function all by yourself. any suggestibility involved in trance states. All you do is arouse in some way memories and understandings and thoughts that ordinarily are not conscious. Herb Spiegel speaks about the eye roll. And he says, people who do not show the eyeball are not hypnotizable. One of my friends is a Herb Spiegel, discovered two subjects of six who are hypnotizable. The other four, he said, were not hypnotizable. So my friend put the others in trance very easily. Hildegard speaks of the hidden observer. Yes, you can put a hidden observer in anybody, if you wish. But in your dreams, you don't have a hidden observer. Your dreams are real. You're eating a real meal, you're driving a car, you're sweating, and there's no observer around except the characters you wish to include in your dream. This is a state of awareness in which the learning you have achieved over a lifetime and which you use automatically suddenly become directly available. A 
all of you have these chairs of bombs. You are trying that consciously. You don't know how to bomb it. But if someone knows how, and can do so, your body knows how to make you blush. You don't know how, and your body does. You know that you secrete saliva. You don't know how you learn to do that. And you secrete saliva suitable for proteins, suitable for fats, suitable for carbohydrates. And I doubt if any of you know how specialized your salivary glands are. But the sense within your mouth tells your salivary glands what kind of saliva is secret. We have many learnings of which we are unaware. You know how to turn pale. You know how to develop goosebumps. You know how to redirect the flow of blood. Oh, you don't know that you know those things. You undergo physical examination. Your knee jerk is normal. And then you clench your fists. You need to just larger because your hands are connected to your arms, your arms to your shoulders, your shoulders to your torso, your torso to your pelvis, your pelvis to your thighs, your thighs to your knee, and tension in your hand reflects by increased tension in your knee. I'd like to have you really enjoy reliving, re-experiencing many progressive things of your past. Important thing in inducing hypnosis is to have a feeling of confidence. As long as your subject is alive, you're going to expect him to develop trance state. As long as he's willing to work with you, you're going to expect a trance state. As long as he comes to you for aid, he can develop a tragedy. Once you really know that, and you really know that you don't do it, yourself he does it, you can have unlimited confidence. And you can expect the utter confidence and your patient is going to go into a trance. I think the most important thing about psychotherapy is your willingness to respect, really to respect your patient do things to recover, to discover, to learn the adjustments that are necessary for his happiness. And your orientation should be exclusively the 
doesn't appear patient. As soon as your patient experiences your feeling of trust and confidence in your genuine interest in his welfare, your patient can respond. You don't need rapport. The patient can come to you and say, I don't like you. I don't want to like you. I despise you. I actually dislike you. But I know you can do psychotherapy. And I need psychotherapy. And while I want nothing from you, I want to discover my own mental health. And you can achieve therapy with that patient. I know much is written about rapport. Transfers. And bear in mind, your patient is an individual. And what you need to do is to get the patient to exercise his abilities. And his abilities are so very great. You really have no idea of what your learnings are. You don't know how you learn and recognize that the noise comes from in front of you or behind you or above you or below you or to your right or to your left. In fact, it can come from any particular direction and you know automatically where that noise is. You never stop to analyze how you learn. You thought you learned where your ears were because your parents taught you to use your hair, your forehead, your nose, your eyes, your mouth, your chin, your ears. Well, I have to learn the ears from in front, from below, from above. And laterally. Now, I said was to learn your ear was here and also here. You still didn't know where your ears were until accidentally one day um, your ear was here. And then one day you found it was here. Only then did you really know where your ear was. Most of your conscious activity is based upon the automatic use of learning. Yet you didn't even know you were achieving. Learning to make noises. At first your cries with were without meaning. Then you learn to cry, or your mother knew whether you were cold or hungry or wet or sleepy or lonesome. And then you learn that other people made noises. And then you learned how to imitate. And you didn't really imitate, you said, Dink Wawa. Only later, 
pleasure to discover that you should say, drink of water. And you learn bit by bit that you do not say, I see that, I saw that. You learn to say, I see that, I saw it, I will see it. You learn tense without knowing you are learning tense. You learn nouns and verbs slowly, without consciously knowing that you are learning. You learn the sound of letters, the sound of combination letters. You learn syllables, you learn words. And now, you can talk all day long without bothering to remember that each letter has its own individual sound. And you're using, when you talk now, hard-won learnings that took time, labor, and effort. over a period of time. It took me a long time to discover your hands were yours. And you discovered you couldn't pick up your hand. The only way you pick up your hand is pick up the right, the left. I gave Palmer stimulation and dorsal hand stimulation. And so when you discovered that your hands were your own, you played with your toes and your knees, wondering what those things were until eventually you discovered they were yours. I'm going to ask you to awaken just from the neck up. And I would like as your head awakens and your body remains sound asleep in deep trance. I would like to have you discover memories Forgotten. I'd like to have you discover the delightful experience of having only your head away. And I'd like to have you share with others even strangers, some of the memories of long ago that you haven't thought about. that memory? Of uh, being in a schoolroom, uh, sitting at a desk, 
in a row. Who is in Vanderbilt? comes to mind a girl. Her name is Cheryl. How long since you thought about Cheryl? What color was his dress? Sure. It seems checked. Are they red or blue and white? Now, of course, in inducing the trance, I spoke about learning to write. Of course, you sell certain regressive. I was thinking about memories of long ago, and I set him up to regress his memories. I'm pretty sure he talked about school. I talked about learning to write. And using was the best way of securing results is by creating a, situ a situation in which the desired results are achieved. How does it feel to be awake from the neck up? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Feels numb the rest of my body. It's like an anesthesia only all over. The glove anesthesia only all over. And medically, this is the best way of having a woman to whip her baby. Because you separate the upper part of her body more part. And the lower part of her body belongs to the obstetrician. The upper part of her body belongs to her. And so, she can think about a baby being born, carpet size, Carpet's hair, if it has any. Is she really going to name it? The name she picked out? How much is it going to weigh? How long will a baby be? She had a delightful time thinking about both. After a while, the obstetrician said, Would you like to see what the baby is? You turn her vision toward him and say, Oh, it's a boy. Now, if you look at your left hand, your right hand, both of them, or maybe both of them, is going to decide all by itself to hurt your face. And maybe you will know which one is going to live. Maybe you won't. But you can watch. And see if you're really right. And you really don't know which one is going to live. You don't really know one or the other. Or both. If you watch them, your hand will get desire. 
Not toward your face. And your elbow will bend. Your wrist will lift. And you really don't know how the unconscious mind <laughs> governs muscular movement. You experience an awareness of some kind of impatience in your hand because it really wants to lift up. Have you discovered there's nothing you can do to <laughs> live together? And you think it's going to lift all over in your face. And your hand can change its mind. Touch your face, and maybe it's going to touch your shoulder. best to stop it. <laughs> How's your hand is going to do it? And the harder you try to stop it, the more determined your hand will get.
And by now you know he can't sit up. You don't even know how to lift your left hand. You don't know how, but your left hand knows. And the only way you can put your right hand down is by reaching up your left hand and putting it down. Your right hand is going to seek your face. And the only way you can put it down is have your right and your left hand reach up and take hold of your right hand and force it down. I don't know if you like music. If you do, you may begin to hear music at a person in the distance and getting closer and closer to hear it plainly. Then you discover that you and my boys are the only things that are real. You don't even need to know where you are. Listen to music. You see the lake in front of you. You can feel the wetness of the water. You can feel the sunshine. Go to sleep. And you can dream. A delightful dream. A dream you can share with strangers. It's going to be a very pleasant dream. A most delightful dream. Time can pass. Seconds, minutes, hours, all night, a whole day, a whole week, a whole month, a whole year.
you can feel yourself growing up a small child to a great big man. All of the memories are yours. And you can feel it and sense it and know them and bring experience growing up from a small child to a big man. a youth, an adolescent, or a man, whatever you choose, you can be. you can share with the others. <coughs> Memory is very complete and very delightful <coughs> that you can share with total strangers. really don't know what interests you. And you now have an opportunity to explore and discover things you experienced long ago.
how long life's experiences are being alone in the dark, a flashing water, a seeing flower, of seeing strangers. of seeing somebody for the very first time. Delight of knowing that you said a word correctly. share with others. And I can please you. I have you experience delight of learning new things and recovering and discovering. Understanding things. Things has happened throughout your life. So waking from Nika. whatever you wish. I remember uh, one thing that uh, was being in a crib on a warm day um, and some of the neighborhood kids, it was in, I was in the backyard in the crib and it was like a playpen and some kids coming around and looking at me. I was very aware of their looking at me as you know, like mm, goo -goo, that sort of you know, they were communicating with me. And then uh, so we're uh, aware of another thing that I hadn't thought of and that was when I was older getting an ice cream from the ice cream truck that came outside in the mm -hmm. summer. And all of us would gather around in the middle of the street around the ice cream truck and, uh, and get, get ice cream after dinner in the evening when it was light in the summer. And before that, <laughs> with the scene, with the dream, there was uh, an old man with a straw hat. It was pulled down so you couldn't see his face. Uh, you could see him standing there up in the periphery in the corner, and uh, which I took to take <laughs> Dr. Erickson, he was, he was the only one there. And then after that, there was uh, like a sunset, <clears throat> only it was uh, like a, the, the skyline of a city, and 
the sky was purple. <laughs> oh, yes. Like uh, a sunset, a very deep sunset. I have demonstrated to you a technique of hypnosis. I think it's the most effective of all. You mentioned various things. You don't try to... You must have specific things. You must your subject respond to your words in whatever way he wishes. He does so freely. How does it feel to be awake from neck up and sound asleep? About the same. A little more comfortable than now. Not as much tingling except in my hands and mm. arms. Not as much, well, there is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, getting cold on my hands. That's very relaxed. When didn't you know who these people were? Well, during... I don't know. It was as if there was a curtain drawn across the room. And I was very aware as though they were being excluded and you were in the curtain you were in but there was a, 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 that's the only way I can describe it so there was a curtain and I didn't know who specifically was on the other side and when a curtain was drawn which was the first person you became aware of. That's here? Mm -hmm. That's here? The first person here? <laughs> I guess it was Lou. Mm -hmm. Lou. all my children up to a certain age and you see something standing beside the crib and one day you see a child doing this and you do child my heavens there are two of those things and more rapidly, uh, good heavens, I see those things. And when do children discover who mother is at a certain early age? A small child calls the neighbor woman mama and mother mama. And here's a woman wearing skirts, Mama. Now someday she discovers that her neighbor is not Mama. And when they go to kindergarten for the first time, and all those strangers, you know what those strangers are, grown-up people or small people, they all look alike. And gradually, they begin to differentiate. Now 
until you realize you can hallucinate negatively and positively, do you not? <coughs> you didn't hear me tell him <coughs> draw a curtain. He drew one. He and I were alone. There's a curtain somewhere. Isn't that a charming feeling to you know you don't know how to move your feet? <laughs> a charm feeling to know that your hand must lift up for your face. Mm -hmm. Do you know which hand is going to? No. How long you think you'd find out? I would guess not very long. How do you use your muscles, your body, at an unconscious level? You walk down the street, you pass somebody, unthinkingly, and then you do a double T. You jerkly stop and jerkly say to yourself, well, I know that guy. And you go back and talk to him. You're driving down the street in the car, the closed car, and a bee hits the windshield. And you jerk back and close your eyes. And a few rods further down, the bee hits into you. Jerk back and bat your eyes again. And you discover you can't stop yourself. Every time a bee hits the windshield, you jerk and bat your eyes. It's a survival measure. Unconscious movements are jerky, irregular, uncertain. and they take time. In working with a subject, you should not be hurried. You ought to be casual. And if the subject doesn't respond, don't ever assume that's the case. I learned back in 1923. I had an excellent subject. I was demonstrating her in a seminar, University of Wisconsin, Clark Hill Hall. She was a marvelous subject. And I had her elevate her hand. And her hands didn't move. And I was in experience. And I knew she was an excellent subject. 
I awakened her for another chance and told her to watch her hand lifting, lifting higher and higher. And she was loosening her hand up here. And I finally tumbled to that fact. And I asked her to put her other hand on top of the left hand. So she brought it up and put it up there. And filled her hand up here when I could see it down here. I know that he first saw his right hand when he lifts up. What surprised him is that his left hand lifted up. teach my medical student every year. I taught them to respect a compulsion. I pick on my medical student and say at the end of the hour, you won't be able to stand up and leave the room until you have heard stood up and walked over the blackboard and written your name. I remember one named Wilson. He said, damn you, I'm not going to do that. At the end of the hour, class stood up to leave. He said, damn you. Damn you. And you I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. He slowly got up and poked on the road his name and a blackboard. Saying all the time, I'm not, I'm not. And he couldn't help himself. I wanted my medical to know what a compulsion was. A real compulsion. <laughs> Sometimes go <though>, and go. <coughs> I know some of my students had very curly hair and very short hair. And I know she kept looking at a certain girl in the group who had long hair down to her waist. And he would quickly touch her hair and look at that girl. And I arranged so that girl sat in a chair beside this one. I had the woman lift her hand hypnotically, and I told her her head was going to do something. Something she wanted to do, didn't know if she wanted to do. And with the uh, uh, puzzle, I grabbed the, the other girl's hair. All my life, I've wanted to have long hair. It never goes out very long, short, curly. I've got a special hair to 
Uh, I said to you, a long hair. But I can't bring myself to, to touch it. I can't move. I just say, let me feel your hair. I could see that she, her behavior indicated she was going to reach out to touch that girl's hair. When she came out of the tent and saw what she was doing, she said, I hope you don't mind, but I really would like to feel your hair. <laughs> now, to induce a very deep trance, All your life, you learn that practice makes perfect. You have your subject in light turns, tell them, and slowly open your eyes and see only your hand. Now close your eyes, open them again, see only your hand. Now close your eyes. And I probably see only your hand again. And pretty soon, they have their vision limited to the hand. And learn that. My boy, what is music? Listen to that orchestra over there. I'm certain you'll begin to hear music very faintly. You might hear it very faintly, fade out, and come back. And person. Your hand will start beating time to the music. Your hand may beat time to the music even before you hear it. more freely. The hand swings back and forth. Can you see his beating time? Combine the hand to build up the auditory experience. Then you have the other hand move slowly to point to where the orchestra is. you be the plane you go here and your right hand will slow the list and point in the direction of the orchestra.
you build up one response after another. His right hand getting to move. And very soon the forefinger will extend to a point. Now this is the best way to learn hypnosis. A long time. How you can observe. in school, listening to the music, beating time with your left hand, and pointing to the source of music. build up my technique and knowledge of hypnosis. I'm giving a great deal of time. And waiting patiently. And learning to identify. Never trying to rush my subjects. I want to see how they did it. Now, if seen patients, I may use it most on them. And they go in and out of trance during the hour without knowing it. They feel that they're accomplishing something. <coughs> All right. Awaken all over. <coughs> Take your time and wake up completely. I'm sore your feet to the top of your head all over. You're going to find it hard to do. You'll discover you don't want to. <laughs> Your attitude of confidence and complete expectation. No urgency in your voice. No doubt in your voice. You simply know you're going to go on to the tent. You simply know that we're going to do the things you want. 
and the things they need to do. And Dempsey, who a subject who desires only to learn, handicapped you the motivation to learn is different from patient's motivation to overcome a neurosis. <laughs>